Hey guys and girls, how's it going? Hope you guys are having a great week. So I'm back today with another video, guys. I'm actually going to weigh in today on the PlayStation 5 deep dive reveal um, that went online today. It was like a an hour long presentation by Mark Cerny. Um, he's one of the geniuses behind the PlayStation 5. He's an incredibly smart man. Obviously, he went into a lot of detail and sort of technical details about the PlayStation 5 and also we got some actual detailed information on the main specs and what we can expect. Now I want to, before we start delving into that and talking about what we learned about the PlayStation 5 and what my general thoughts are on the actual console, I want to start off just by talking about the actual presentation itself. For me, this presentation was just really, really weird. It was such a strange presentation. Now, obviously, this was designed and aimed at developers and was probably going to be delivered during the GDC, which obviously, as we know, got cancelled due to obviously what's going on at the moment. So the tone of the presentation was just really, really weird. Um, it was very technical. It felt very, very long. And the presentation itself just felt incredibly dry and in points just really really long-winded and it, it was just very strange in terms of its pacing I've got nothing against Mark Cerny he's an incredibly smart guy but it just felt like you know the the tone of it that it really needed somebody to make it a little bit more uh, suited to gamers it probably would have helped if PlayStation had, prior to the, the event, just sort of set the scene a little bit. Um, they didn't lie and say, you know, it's a reveal or anything like that. They did say it was a technical deep dive, and that is exactly what we got. So it's not like they missed soldiers on the event, but it was just really strange that they made this event publicly available because obviously they must know that PlayStation fans and gamers in general are really crying out for more information on the PlayStation 5. They want to get their hands on any nugget of information that we can do, obviously, so we know what to expect and obviously gamers can start saving and making a decision on which console they're going to jump in on you know, next generation. We've had a lot of information revealed about the Xbox One Series X, which is sounding pretty cool, pretty powerful, but a lot of gamers were really, really clambering from information from PlayStation, and Sony have been pretty quiet, you know, over the last couple of months, so it's not surprising that people were going to hype this up and maybe make this event more exciting and, and bigger than perhaps it was initially intended. So it would have been good for Sony to have gone, maybe done a little bit of a review Reveal and general um, general things that gamers to know and different features and maybe showcasing some of the games working on the console before then going into this deep dive technical video for those that are interested in that it, it felt like the audience and that was aimed at with this was was not gamers it was more developers so the overall presentation itself wasn't great um, as I was watching the stream and checking the comments you know on the right hand side there was a lot of you know sleeping emojis and a lot of people sort of saying this is really boring it's really dragging on just get to the point show us the console show us the games because that's obviously what we're interested in you know for me I am, yes, I'm kind of interested in the, the technical side of things and what that's going to mean for the future of game development and game design. But of course, you know, the major important thing for gamers is what does the console look like? What does the controller look like? How much is the console going to be? And when is it set for release? And then what are going to be some of the games that we can buy on day one? You know, what exclusives are going to be available on that console? That's what people want to know. And sadly, those things were definitely not answered in this presentation. So if you haven't watched it and you are hoping to have a reveal on the console and see games and find out when it's coming out on its price point, sadly, that wasn't revealed here. I think Sony is still holding that back and hopefully we'll, we'll get that as we get closer to, you know, when E3 was, was going to be in June. Maybe they'll be aiming for a June release um, in terms of that information. So let's talk about about specifically the specs well the specs for the playstation 5 are not 
overly different to the Xbox Series X. Both consoles themselves are fairly similar. They're both incredibly powerful. So let's go through obviously the specs that were confirmed. We do know that the PlayStation 5 is going to have a custom RDNA 2 GPU in terms of its architecture. Um, it's going to have eight times Zen 2 cores at 3.5 gigahertz with variable frequency. And its GPU is going to be quite powerful. It's going to actually have 10.28 teraflops, um, and that's across 36 CUs. And it's going to have 16 gigabyte uh, GDDR6 RAM. It's going to have a custom built 825 gigabyte SSD hard drive. I'll get back to that shortly because that for me was probably the most one of the most interesting things in the presentation. Um, it is going to also support um, 4K UHD Blu-ray disk drive as well. So I know a lot of people have been asking for that. Um, even the PlayStation Pro doesn't offer that. So a lot of people will be happy to see that in there. So in terms of teraflops, it's not as powerful as the Xbox Series X, which has, I think, 12 teraflops so obviously the xbox series x is the more powerful console but for me that's neither here nor there you know it's still incredibly powerful i think the playstation has like 1.98 teraflops in terms of its power so that's pretty massive that's a huge huge jump for the playstation 5 so we're going to notice a very very definite uh, improvement there in terms of power and performance what i did like about the presentation during it is they actually did talk about performance they did talk about um the buildup of heat and they also talked about cooling the the playstation 5 and also the um the noise that the console is going to be making because the playstation 4 while it's got incredible exclusive titles and, and it's got a great catalog you know catalog of games it's a pretty noisy console and particularly when you are playing games that are quite demanding the console does get really really noisy and it does build up some heat quite quickly which when you're a streamer or a youtuber like me you're trying to record that um, and stream that's kind of a problem because it, there is that noise in the background so it is great to hear that they are aware that that's an issue um, it was kind of interesting to hear him sort of talk about the playstation 4 and almost kind of criticize its failures and its weaknesses and that's that's good that they can look at that themselves and they're obviously wanting to improve on that but it sounds like they're going to be using variable frequency to try to uh, adjust for that and to sort of you know ad adjust the power and the heat coming off of it so hopefully the playstation 5 will be a quieter console even though it is a lot more powerful than the playstation 4 um we didn't get to hear too much about features we know actually more in terms of features on the um xbox series x so we know that it's going to have uh, smart delivery so that if you buy halo infinite on the xbox one it will also be available on the xbox Series X, so you actually be able to buy it, play it. If you buy it on one, you get to play it across both uh, generations. We do know as well that the Xbox Series X is actually going to have one a one terabyte SSD hard drive, and that it's is also going to have a new system of memory cards that you can buy these are microsoft made specific to use on the xbox series x and these will be able to you'll be able to expand your hard drive space um, through that method but one of the coolest looking features for me as well on the xbox series x is the quick resume so we do know that those 12 teraflops are being used quite effectively and that you will actually be able to sort of have at five or six games actually in standby and switch between them really smoothly so we already know a lot of features on the on the xbox series x we didn't learn too much about the features on the playstation 5 we do know it is going to have some form of backwards compatibility but during the talk they only they only mentioned the playstation 4 pro and the playstation 4 like those are different 
platforms for games. But anyway, he only talked about the PlayStation 4 generally. And for that, they said actually that not all PlayStation 4 games are going to be backwards compatible at the start. That actually, um, I think they mentioned something like the top 100 most popular uh, PlayStation 4 titles will probably be available um to play on the PlayStation 5 on release. So that's a little disappointing. I was hoping that um, all games would be available to, to play on the PlayStation 5. I was also hoping that we'd have some kind of um, PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 2 uh, backwards compatibility. They haven't said too much about their streaming technology and the, the future of streaming and the PlayStation now, if that's going to be evolved or updated. Um, so they didn't talk about that. There's a couple of other features I'd really like to see on the PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation 5, sorry, as well. So I want, I want to really see some improvements on the PlayStation 4. I want the ability to be able to buy a game and gift it to someone. Um, irrespective of their region kind of like what you can do on steam i want the ability to do that i don't know why that is a feature that still isn't available um so we didn't find out too much um about the the different features but there were a couple of things in the presentation for me that were interesting I liked the talk about the uh, 3D audio. I think that will be really, really cool. Um, it sounds great. Um, it sounds really, really good. They were talking about how the PlayStation 5 it is going to have its own kind of system that will support uh, improved audio and 3D audio. So you're not going to have to buy, hopefully, super expensive headphones or tech to be able to take make use of that. Um, they did say that the head user Using headphones is the sweet spot and they were talking about that kind of immersion and being able to hear you know things from from multiple and, and different angles so that would be really really cool but the most interesting thing for me was definitely the SSD hard drive for me this is a big game changer in my opinion and I think it really does demonstrate how uh, Sony is looking forward and how it's always trying to push the envelope and evolve their technology to help developers and when Mark Cerny was talking about their 825 gigabyte you know specific SSD hard drive um, he was talking about that that, that that's what they, they designed it around um, it sounds incredibly powerful um, it is a PlayStation 5 like dedicated hard drive so it's been designed purely for the playstation 5 but they were he was talking about things like games loading like 5.5 gigabyte bytes worth of data loading in a second and they were talking about you know different things that they're really trying to achieve with the playstation 5 so you know games booting up in seconds having no load screens because it just loads that quickly and um, immediate you know getting immediately back into the action after dying it can you imagine bloodborne 2 and can you imagine that kind of game where you just die a lot and you die so much but you're back in the action like that and straight back to fighting and then we're talking about you know how fast travel is going to be a lot quicker but what was really interesting for me was the way in which he was talking about this technology and actually how that is going to give game developers the freedom to be able to create and develop levels the way that they want to. So at the moment, game developers, you know, create levels with uh, elevators and long corridors, and they, they put these smart little systems in place to hide all the minutia, all the loading that's happening as levels are being loaded in there. So it, it'll be great um, if this technology is able to be used utilized by developers because it will give them freedom and that's the most exciting thing for me is how that kind of technology and that kind of speed can really influence the kinds of games that are being developed um, on the playstation 5 and that for me is is an area where sony are kind of you know, pipping um, Microsoft because Microsoft with their smart delivery system, game developers are still having to develop games that will support the infrastructure of the Xbox One, um, of the Xbox One X and of the Xbox Series X for at least two years. So that's going to, to a degree, hold back development for at least two years, particularly for their first party studios. 
Whereas for Sony, it looks like they're going all in on the next generation. So it will be interesting to watch this space and see what kind of games come out of this this increased technology and this increased power and this you know really really quick loading times the only thing i would have liked to have seen is i would have liked to have seen this in action it seemed like mark uh kearney was giving us promises and was talking about these things but we didn't actually get to see any any tech demos or actually get to see anything in action um xbox have shown that microsoft have shown some tech demos where they were showing state of decay 2 and how that was loading in a lot quicker they also showed us a tech demo of uh, multiple games sort of in suspension and swapping between games, which is kind of cool. But I would have liked to have seen Sony actually demonstrate this with some tech demos. It would have been really, really cool to have seen some gameplay for, say, Godfall, um, which we do know is one of the first exclusive titles um, and first party titles to be coming out on the PlayStation 5 on launch date. So it would have been really cool to have seen that. Um, but for me, yeah, the SSD hard drive for me and that 5.5 gigabyte a second loading time is really the most exciting part of the PlayStation 5. And that's what got me really interested and, and really excited. So yeah, those are generally my thoughts on the PlayStation 5 reveal. I thought the presentation itself was kind of weak, was a little bit weird in tone, but we got some more information and there were some things in there that were quite exciting. I do really think that Sony now need to step up their marketing campaign. I think their marketing team are doing a pretty piss poor job of really promoting the console and, and communicating with the gaming community. I think they're doing a, quite a poor job of that. And I just feel like a lot of gamers are kind of poking them and going, what are you doing? Like, get your act together. Give us some information. Of course, we know that things are a little bit crazy at the moment. Um, in the world and we're still waiting to see what's going to happen. We have been told at the moment that uh, the PlayStation 5 is on track to meet its holiday 2020 launch date but obviously we take things on a day-by-day day, day by day basis and you know Sony have to make sure that their development teams and their manufacturers and their workers are safe and that's the most important thing. So if the console gets delayed into 2021 so be it, you know, it happens. Um, but I want to see more. I want to see the console. I want to see that console working. I want to know how much it's going to be and I want to see some games. That's the next thing that I would like to see from Sony. So those are my general thoughts on the PlayStation 5 tech reveal. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. What were your thoughts of the presentation? What did you think about the news and the specs? Um, and was there anything in there that was exciting? for you and was interesting if there's anything i've missed or i haven't uh, touched upon that you think is important then yeah share that in the comment section below and, and let me know what your thoughts are but anyway i hope you guys have a great week of course take care and as always happy gaming bye guys mm -hmm.